guys, this is Priya from the MDC. Welcome to another episode of the Virtual Speaker Series. Today's guest is the amazing Tom Parsons. Would you mind introducing yourself? Um, Tom, I am a photographer on social media, predominantly Instagram and Facebook, but I take photos of Lego people around the world. My account is the Lego Backpacker, so take photos of different travel spots and use Lego as my context with no other humans in the shots usually. That is awesome. Firstly, I absolutely love your page um, and would like to know what inspired you to come up with the whole Lego concept. It was about six years ago. I was going on a late OE, wanted to travel to as many countries as possible. I wasn't big on social media at the time and I like taking photos, but I don't like being in front of the camera. So I wanted to take photos, but I wanted to have some sort of context. So with a bit of brainstorming, etc., kind of came up with the idea that I'd take some shots of a Lego version of me instead. Mm -hmm. It meant that it was more based about the location that I was at, the expressions, the culture, more things like that, rather than the actual person that's in the photo. Started to take photos wherever I traveled with the little bag of Lego that I had in my backpack. And yeah, that's pretty much how I came up with the idea. For all the photographers out there listening, what equipment did you use when starting out? When I first started, I had a mirrorless Samsung NX3200 with 16 to 55 mil lens. I did all my editing actually on a Samsung tablet. I didn't even have a laptop with me at the time. Wow. So that's how I started. And then after traveling for about nine months, I then upgraded and got a laptop. The last two years I've been using Sony Alpha 7, 18 to 55 mil lens photography, and I do all my editing on Photoshop as well as Lightroom. What skills and qualities have you found to be useful in order to be successful in your job? I'm very patient when I'm taking a photo. I like to wait for the right moment to get the shot, make sure that there's no one in the shot, or if there are people in it, they're in the right positions and everything. The other thing is that I'm very good at researching. If I travel, I'll spend weeks before going to a location looking up places to photograph or looking up on Google Maps different places to different angles and things, as well as working out what the weather will be, just so that I know what I'm arriving to and what I'm working with, as well as being prepared of ordering Lego if I have to get something particular when I go somewhere. I'm also fortunate that I've come from a design background, so I'm used to using Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Suite, Lightroom, things like that to adjust my photos and have them all prepared to the right touches. That's really cool. How do you keep consistent with posting content? You do have over 500 posts on your page so I was wondering if it gets difficult sometimes to keep producing creative content. I never really struggle at producing content. I struggle with making it consistent because I have another job like a full-time job as well. Easy part with Getting the content is there's so many platforms and research available now that you look at Instagram and you go into a location and you look at the places that you want to go. You can see a million and one photos of people that have been uh, to Waiheke, Lake Taupo and things like that. I'm lucky enough that using something like Lego, I can actually point and go, yep, this is popular for, I did a post today of mountain biking. I knew that that was a good spot to do it. So I knew exactly what to organize. The hardest part is actually being consistent and making sure that I've got constant posts and things happening. I do have a, some periods of time where I haven't posted for, I think the longest I've gone for is about a month. All these photos that you've taken, which ones are your favorite and why? And I know you've sent a couple through, so would you like to tell us about these photos? Got this one first. <laughs> so it's that tree in Wanaka. The reason I actually love that shot is behind every photo, there's kind of a story of how I got there or the research getting there or looking at everything there. There's a million photos of that tree on multiple platforms around the world now. I set up my camera and my tripod. I didn't have my tripod. I left it back where I was staying. So I ended up having a stack of rocks under my camera. <laughs> Had it sitting on the rocks about an inch above the water, oh. trying not to get it wet. To get the shot like that, I actually did a long exposure shot for about 15, about 10 to 15 seconds. It picks up all the light, all the colors and everything really detailed. Yeah. But it means that the camera has to be very still. It all kind of worked out really well. The canoe is just balancing on top of a little rock. And about a second after the photo finished, this miniature wave just took it out. So oh, no. <laughs> I took about yeah. 10 shots in about 30 minutes. 
but that shot was actually the very first shot I took. Oh, um, wow. yeah, no, that's awesome. It looked stunning. Very good story behind it. That one is, I was in London at the time and a group of influencers were contracted by Dubai Tourism to go to Dubai for a week. One of them pulled out suddenly and I was in contact with the photographer that was organizing it, Paperboy, who's got half a million followers now. He said, yep, your content's really good. Come along, this will be great. For me, this was actually my first trip that I'd done with a tour company. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I had to cover. I didn't know what anything, but they sent me the itinerary about two weeks before we went on the trip. Cause I said to them, I need to know where we're going, what we're doing. So I've got the right stuff. And they said that we're going and go hot air ballooning above the Dubai desert. I was immediately on the internet trying to order a hot air balloon made out of Lego. Wow. <laughs> and got that ordered. <laughs> and pretty much got it ordered, built it all up, got to Dubai. It had smashed into a thousand pieces no. and rebuilt it all in the hotel room that night. We were on a strict itinerary for the whole week. And then we went on the balloon ride out in the middle of the desert. To get in a hot air balloon, it held 15 people. The balloon would have inflate we had to run across the sand and jump in literally but they told us that we weren't allowed any bags we weren't allowed anything so I pretty much had that tucked underneath my jacket with my camera and ran onto it praying it didn't break so I ended up jumping on Nige another Instagrammer who's called Levanta Man from London and Paperboy were there just cracking out laughing while I put this thing together whilst we floated across the desert in Dubai and ended up getting the shot and um, it came out really good so as I said with every shot it's it's not the best photo taken but it's kind of the story behind it so yeah. and that's what I enjoy putting all my details rather than just saying hey I'm up a hot, hot air balloon which is kind of obvious yeah but it came out really well so that's why I love that one. Wow, that is an incredible story for a great photo. We noticed that you sell merchandise as well. So how did you monetize your personal brand? With the products and the branding and everything, I had a few people that asked me, how can I get a print? I want to have a print at home. So I sat down, did some research, and I found an online website, Redbubble, which allowed me to upload any content that I had and put it on there. And then I could choose if it could go onto any product. So it could go on front of a ring binder, it could go on a t-shirt, poster, clocks, the whole nine yards. It gives the option pretty much if someone wants to buy a poster or anything like that, it works out really well. Without yeah. having to worry about, especially whilst you're traveling or you're moving around or you don't have the facilities to do it yourself. So they take a commission. I get a small profit out of it as well. They host the website and they have all of that. And I just make sure that I've got it on Instagram and Facebook. And if I ever share any pictures of it, I'll have a link to it and go from there. Yeah, awesome. Very creative. Another question is, what are some of the biggest setbacks you've faced throughout your career? And what have you learned from them? I spent a long time whilst traveling trying to work out how to do everything rather than being prepared before I went. And I was very much just winging it. I could do things differently. I would have definitely looked into how to do the posts, looked at YouTube a bit more to understand how to use my camera better, get the right layout for my photos, see different ways of doing toy photography photography and travel photography, as well as understanding how Instagram worked, how hashtags worked, how followers and being communicative with everyone would work. That was kind of the main thing was just understanding your market, understanding the people that follow you, understanding the equipment that you have and understanding how much you've actually got available that you don't know about. It's taken a wee while, but I picked it up pretty quickly. Uh, whenever I could <laughs> to try and get my head around it. I wish I knew how to take a good photo at the beginning. <laughs> I wish I knew how to do, a, uh, have a good composition, have a good layout, make sure that when I take a photo, understand that I'm not going back there and I won't have the opportunity at that time ever again, because it's never going to be the same. Yeah, it's very important to know, I feel. I'm going to bring up your Instagram. This is your Instagram page for anyone who's watching and wants to check it out. And my last question is how have you been working remotely right now? So having a good laptop, having good power, always stable internet access is a major, but remotely right now with this kind of period in the world, we're quite fortunate that it's a lot easier now than what it was 
five years ago when I first started traveling. Trying to work remotely back then was touch and go. Working remotely now is kind of what everyone's got to adjust to, I believe. Just be prepared for it all. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us in this interview and giving us your time. Everyone should definitely go check out this page. It's got some true gems in here. Really love, oh, awesome. Is that Deadpool? I haven't, I haven't used him much. That was for Halloween, actually. Oh, really? Oh, gosh. Definitely bring some more out. So definitely go check him out. Thank you so much. No problem. Cheers.